On this edition of Around BCC, we take our annual trip to New Bedford to see what's new and exciting at BCC's campus in the Whaling City. Our alumni this month parlayed his BCC education into a career in local politics. Combating climate change was the topic of a regional conference at the Fall River campus. And the men's and women's basketball teams play in the postseason. Welcome to Around BCC, I'm Keith Tebow. We're in the month of March, and with all the bad weather we've experienced, at least March spring comes into play later on uh, this month, so we're hoping for nicer weather across all of Bristol Community College's campuses as we continue through the spring 2015 semester. As you know, we're not in our television studio, but we are on location. It's been a tradition here on the show for the past, or well, at least 10 years, where we have uh, made a point to visit some of the BCC satellite campuses outside of the main campus in Fall River. And today we're pleased to be back again in the Whaling City of New Bedford. We're going to be talking about all the great activity that's happening here at BCC's New Bedford campus. I am joined by Wes Lundberg. He's the Dean of the New Bedford campus. Mm -hmm. And Lynn Broder, who is the Assistant Dean of Health Sciences. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for having us. Wes, this is, I think, your second opportunity to be on the show. It is. You're an old pro now to do That's this right. two years That's in a row. Right. So let me, let, let's get right, right into sure. what's happening here in New Bedford, Wes. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like uh, interest uh, continues to be strong with BCC's presence here. Um, we are, I believe, almost 15 years here in New Bedford mm -hmm. as a full-fledged campus. Mm -hmm. So talk about a little bit of, of, of how, you know, BCC has now become part of the fabric of New Bedford. Yeah, it really has. Well, you know, if you talk to anyone in the mayor among them, uh, the downtown area here has, has revitalized with the presence of BCC and, and UMass Dartmouth, of course. But um, we have the two locations here. Uh, one is uh, sharing the first floor of the UMass Dartmouth uh, Fine Arts Program uh, over on Union Street. and then. The building that we're in right now, 800 Purchase Street, where we have almost four full floors of the five, and uh, and uh, looking to expand that uh, as as time goes by in the next year or two. But um, you know, you you see more people walking on the street <laughs> here than uh, than in the past, as I understand it, and um, we continue to grow. We're a little bit of a downturn right now, but mm -hmm. you know, we've been on average, uh, and we're still ahead of where we were two years ago. Right. So we're growing. Um, and we're, we're planning for that. Uh, I, I know I was fortunate enough to be here when they opened the, the Star Store campus, mm -hmm. but they still call it, I guess, around here, mm -hmm. um, and the excitement around it. And, um, you know, I was fortunate enough to be here when the, the growth of just this New Bedford uh, operation, just it, it was just, and President Sprague says it all the time, you know, if, if we're there, they'll come. Yeah. If, you know, make the opportunity available for students, and, and they'll come. And I know, Wes, this year, um, there's always new opportunities for students, new academic programs. So even though we're, you know, in March of 2015, what are some of the new opportunities that students have seen academically here this uh -huh. past year? Sure. Well, one that springs immediately to mind is uh, English as a second language. Uh, there's, we've had a, a non-credit presence here. UMass Dartmouth has done some work. Um, uh, the Workforce Center has done some work with that. But we identified a niche for bridging the uh, cultural competency level to college uh, level. And so we're bridging that gap and we've got the, the full sl uh, slate of courses are going right now. Um, and it's growing. So we have planned uh, four sections uh, for the fall, whereas we did two uh, this year. So um, the whole program is up and running and it's, it's looking very good and it's good to be, you know, um, uh, uh, fulfilling a need that's, that's been there. So. When you look at um, trying to devise new academic programs for New Bedford, obviously a lot depends on the demographics, a lot depends on also maybe the needs of businesses in, in, in the region. Um, I guess sort of look ahead a little bit that maybe some of the ideas you may be looking at for 20, the fall of 2015 mm -hmm. and, and are we at a point yet where um, you know we may be meeting pretty much, we may be coming to a crossroads to say you know we, we're meeting a lot of needs here you know, do we want to expand to some exploratory areas? Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. Well, one, you know, the, we, we have some things going on the traditional front as well as things, you know, we, we've had the wind energy program and that continues. Um, we're looking at expanding the business fast track program, uh, which is something that's been 
Um, doing very well on, on the New Bedford campus has not been available at other campuses and we have some interest with uh, some some potential business um, uh, organizations that would like to to make that opportunity for their students or, excuse me their employees um, that would be a program where you can do your two-year business uh, general business degree in one year mm. um, it's it's very fast-paced <laughs> and uh, uh, but it's a great opportunity to get a two-year degree very very quickly <clears throat> And, um, and you know open up some new career paths as well. Um, on the more traditional front, talking with the art department in Fall River at the main campus, <coughs> excuse me, about uh, bringing the, a full art program here. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at focusing possibly on uh, 3D art, um, the, uh, the sculpture, mm -hmm. as well as uh, you know the computer graphic des design. So, mm -hmm. and that would be on this campus as well. And, and launching that in the fall, with the first year, full slate of first year courses available, and then, um, of course, the second year we would have the first and second year of courses. Um, that's still in the in the planning stages, but it's looking very good. Mm. Let's uh, talk to Lynn here for a few moments. One of the one of the needs that was met, sought after here in New Bedford was the health uh, care industry, and uh, that spawned the creation of the health program, which has been going on now for a number of years, continues to grow. Um, Talk a little bit, uh, Lynn, about how that program has grown here and how it has benefited the Greater New Bedford community. Uh, it has really uh, grown quite a bit from what I understand. I'm fairly new to this mm -hmm. position. Uh, this position was created specifically uh, to service this building or this campus and the e-health programs that are here. Um, the e-health programs allow students to get a degree in the health sciences uh, while not having to be here on campus as a full-time student. So they do most of their coursework online. Uh, they show up here on campus for laboratory days. Um, so it allows your working professional, your mom, your um, somebody that has other obligations to come in and get a degree in healthcare. The nursing program here is um, always at capacity. Mm. Nursing is always a career that is in demand. Um, the area seems to support it. The health center right next door is always looking to hire some right. of our nurses. Um, but it's not just the nursing program here that's big in e-health. We also have um, our occupational uh, therapy assistant that is a big competitive program as well. Um, we have massage therapy. Um, Farm tech is another big area that there seems to be a need for with a lot of CVS, Walgreen pharmacies mm -hmm. now being open 24 hours. Right. There's a need to fill those pharmacy tech positions. Um, this semester, our pharmacy tech program, of course, is full once again. We do have a waiting list. Um, students get a fabulous education that provides um, a, a means of income while they are pursuing maybe another degree, a general health studies degree. And um, we have a fabulous facility here for our pharmacy tech students. Yeah, I, I want to get into that. And, you know, one of the, the great things, and it was brought up and uh, when, when eHealth started, was the partnership. Higher Education Partners still provides some great resources to make this mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. And um, we've had the opportunity to, to tour this facility in the past, but um, this is definitely, Lynn, state-of-the-art, state-of-the-art equipment. So I guess talk, get into a little bit of that and how, what, what these students get the opportunity to learn with. And they, learn it, it's incredible. Um, from, again, I'll talk about pharmacy tech. We have right. a simulated pharmacy downstairs. Right. Um, hopefully you'll get to be able to take some photos right. of that so people can actually see what it looks like. But it is set up to be an actual pharmacy where the back wall is pharmacy bottles, drug bottles, of mm -hmm. course, there's no real pharmaceuticals in right. them, they're filled with beads. Um, but this allows the students to be able to practice mm -hmm. filling pharma, uh, pharmacy um, orders. It's not just for retail, it's also for clinical based. Mm -hmm. The students are also, there's a code down there where they're taught to prepare sterile IV, sterile IV solutions, um, fill a med cart for a floor in a hospital, um, so we're not just preparing them for the retail experience, they're being prepared for all areas of the pharmacy. Um, I can say that one of the uh, uh, newest uh, areas for that pharmacy, 
farm tech program is that we have recently become associated with several local pharmacies mm -hmm. for their clinical experience. Oh, that's great. The last two weeks of the program, they go out and actually work in and not work. They, they are students in a clinical pharmacy. Wow. So we are affiliated with a couple of independent pharmacies in Fall River, and we have also become associated with Walgreens. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. Um, so Walgreens in particular is a fairly new affiliation. Our students were placed there last semester, and many have been offered job opportunities um, just based upon the fact that they are BCC students and they've been well-trained in the field. Right. I know that some of the other uh, technology that we have, and we, we saw it last year, uh, was the, the, the simulators that are downstairs, that it's actually as if there's a patient there are in, in that two, bed where yes. people and, and students can, yes. can practice. We have two simulation labs. Um, one is an adult simulator. Her right. name is Susie. And um, Susie she's the simulator. Susie the simulator. <laughs> and she is our adult uh, simulation. She sits in a bed in a room. Uh, there is a control booth in between the two simulation rooms where faculty sit there with a laptop and they control all aspects of what happens mm. with Susie. They can make her blood pressure rise, they can make her respirations, so her chest will actually go up and down with breathing, her eyes blink. Um, they are the voice of Susie, so the nursing students will ask, how are you feeling today? And Susie will respond, mm. I'm not feeling well, or what the issue is. Mm -hmm. um, there are cameras in the room so that uh, the faculty can actually film how the right. students react to wow, a that's... medical process. They then play it back for the students um, during a debriefing after the simulation is done and the students get to see what it's like to be in a real world situation. Right. On the flip side of that, we have a pediatric patient. His name's Hal. And um, Hal was actually uh, up and running yesterday. Today is Susie's day. Um, <laughs> Susie's turn. Susie's <laughs> turn. Um, so Hal yesterday was our pediatric patient who was having an asthma attack. Yeah. And the students were actually able to go through and, and simulate what that is like and what the signs and symptoms and, and, and what they should do in order to treat Hal. Yeah. So that is one of the state-of-the-art yeah. simulation Marvel, in the yeah. area. Actually, um, my background is I come from UMass Dartmouth. I was a faculty member there. And BCC actually had a simulation lab before UMass Dartmouth right. did as far as the nursing program went. Yeah. So it is absolutely one of the um, best state-of-the-art nursing programs. I, before we, we, we finish with, with Lynn, I just want to ask you again about um, students. Um, it, it's always been difficult to get into some of these health sciences. I yes. know when eHealth started and made it, a little more slots became open, but is there still a long waiting list for some of these? Some of these programs? Some of these programs, there is a waiting list. Our nursing, our um, occupational therapy, mm -hmm. there is a waiting list. Again, um, we try and take as many students as possible because there is a need to fill out there right. in the community. Um, but, you know, space constraints and faculty constraints allow us only to take, we're up, I believe we take 92 students between the eHealth and the traditional combined right. um, per year. Um, my suggestion for students that are looking to get into these programs is to possibly start the uh, general studies health degree, right. get the prerequisites out of the way, um, and then apply to these specialized programs. And even with that general studies degree, they may be able to get some experience in the real world, correct? Correct. While they're taking correct. their courses here um, in their major. Certificate programs. Right. We offer a certificate program in phlebotomy. We offer a certificate program in central sterile. Um, CNA, so they can pursue their general health studies yeah. associate degree and earn a certificate in one semester, which then allows them to actually work, have a career while they're working towards their yeah. degree. Wes, uh, as we mentioned, it's BCC here in New Bedford has now become part of the fabric of downtown mm -hmm. and part of the fabric of, of New Bedford. Um, how How is this campus getting the word out to try to make sure that, you know, and, you know, people get stale, they get comfortable, sure, yeah. but there, you know, there's always great opportunities for people. So how, how is mm -hmm. the New Bedford campus doing and getting the word out, marketing, marketing itself locally mm -hmm. to try to keep the students in, in the door here? Sure. Well, we, uh, <clears throat> I would say in the last several months, have been focusing on the same approach that we have with students on campus and academic programs, which is where are the students and what are their needs, and then how do we get the educational material to them? or 
help them understand. We're taking that approach to the public relations and advertising as well. So mm -hmm. when you think about where students are now, they're not typically, we're, we're still advertising with newspaper and, and some of those traditional right. avenues, but that's not typically where students are now. Well, they're, some of the non-traditional students maybe. The yes, older students yeah, maybe absolutely, still, so absolutely. But the younger generation, they're moving more and more toward the online. Right. So we're exploring ways of increasing our presence there. Um, I just had two, uh, one, uh, our director of campus operations, Karen Verrier, and my assistant went to a workshop on social media and right. how to maximize your presence there. And so we're launching into that and planning how we're going to do that, how we're going to ma you know, manage it. Uh, and, um, and then the other thing that we're doing is engaging students more. Um, in the past, we haven't had a lot of student activities. Mm -hmm. um, and we've, we've increased that quite a bit this year already. Mm -hmm. um, in October, we did a pumpkin carving uh, uh, event with parents and their kids. And they came in, and what did we have, about 20, 20 students and their kids and families? Mm -hmm. And uh, that was great fun, a lot of, a lot of good, good feedback. Today, uh, we have an event with a photo booth downstairs where students can you know, just take photos, take yeah. photos yeah. of themselves. He's got costumes down there yeah, and yeah, stuff, yeah. you know, and it's, it's great fun. So we're going to go down later and, and participate too. Yeah. And, uh, and then uh, for April, we're looking at possibly doing a, uh, a, a block party kind of idea. This is very preliminary, but... Hopefully the snow will be gone yeah, by then. Yeah, the snow might be. Yeah, you know, we can work around it. We'll <laughs> yeah, clear yeah. out some places. Um, but, you know, the community will be invited to that, and we'll, we'll have some of those kinds of activities that I was just talking about, maybe a dunk the dean sort of thing. And, and uh, you know, one of those... He says, he says that looking I at said, Lynn, not yeah, yeah. himself. <laughs> He's yeah, there's, there's a little, <laughs> should, yeah, the deans maybe, yeah. The deans. So, uh, you know, something to make it more fun and engaging right. for students. So, um, yeah. And we'll, faculty. Yeah. Um, you know, the photo booth is not just yeah. for the students, no, but also right. for the faculty that's right. that are here. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the faculty that work here seem to mm -hmm. enjoy it. it it's a, a up and coming campus. Mm -hmm. um, we hear great comments from the faculty yeah. as well. And, yeah. and I know that, um, you know, for, for a while now, for quite a few years, you know, this is a full-fledged campus. Yes, you have student activities. You, you've got all your your bookstore, financial aid. I mean, this is a one-stop shop, mm -hmm. and you know there's opportunities for students. We've talked about this every year when we do this segment. The students don't need to leave New Bedford to get a degree. They can take that's everything right. right here. So that's, that's right. That's we still same. use the language of satellite, you know, right. but that's it's transitional, really. This is we're recognized by the state as a as an independent, not yeah. independent, but an in individual campus, right. and so that means exactly what you said, right. uh, full service and all the activities and everything that you get at the, at the main campus. Yeah. Wes and Lynn, I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. All the best here in New Bedford, yeah. and uh, we'll come back again. Sounds, Sounds great. Good. Good. We'll have more of around BCC right after this. Welcome back to Around BCC, as this month we are focusing on BCC's New Bedford campus. I'm pleased to be joined now by one of the many, many students who calls the New Bedford campus his home. I'm pleased to be joined by student Joao Vega. Uh, Joao, thank you for joining me. I appreciate yeah, no it. No problem. Anytime. Let, let me ask you, uh, New Bedford boy, yep. born and raised here? Uh, actually, I moved from Florida, but I used to go to New Bedford High School for freshman, sophomore year. Then I moved to Florida, and I'm back here. So you were actually, were you born in New Bedford, went back to Florida and came back? Or I was born, born in Stowen, Massachusetts. Oh, okay. And I moved to Florida with my mom, and now I moved back here. Let me ask you, um, when, when you were uh, finishing high school and you were looking at going to college, what were some of your options and why did you choose BCC? And, and, what, and how did the New Bedford location weigh in that decision? Um, mostly family. Uh, I was in Jacksonville, and I didn't really have that family support. And um, so I decided to move to New Bedford where the majority of my family live here and the campus. Uh, my cousin who works here, Manuela Rosa, um, the staff knows her, she gave me a lot of pointers and it was a no doubt that I was going to come here mm -hmm. with a lot of support. Let me ask you, how important was it to have the location here in New Bedford for you? Was that an important decision saying, you know, I can take all my classes pretty much here yeah. in New Bedford? Uh, that's one of the main reasons also because you don't want anything better, I mean, 
it's because it's local pretty much. Right. Local school, you won't miss classes, a ride is not a problem, it's close, so attendance is very important. So uh, from what I understand, you're a general studies yep. major, you're going to be transferring this fall. Yeah. Uh, where are you going to be transferring and what, were some, what are some of your options when you go? To UMass Amherst, transferring okay. this fall. I uh, sent an application yesterday actually for mass transfer program. And uh, I'm going to be majoring in sociology and psychology and i um, also going to try out for a football team out there. And I've um, been working hard and that's the plan. Good for you. Yeah. Well, BCC doesn't have a football team, but that's good. Did you play in New Bedford High? Or did I you played in New Bedford High in Florida. Oh, good for you. Yeah. What position, I have to ask? I played D tackle and then senior year I lost a lot of weight and moved to defensive back. Oh, good. Yeah. You get the speed working for you, yeah. I hope, right? You're going to need that in the Division Definitely. One level. Yep. Uh, let me ask you, you're also heavily involved um, here with activities. Um, I understand you're a student ambassador, yep. which is uh, good for your resume, good for your transcript. Um, why did you want to get involved with activities other than your studies here at BCC? What interests you about doing that? It's mostly helping the people because, like, you know, community in Buffer, not a, not a lot of people look at school as an option. Yeah. And I just felt like being close to the student and giving the right pointers that Bristol Community College is a great option for, to advancing in future. That's pretty much it. I want to be involved. What are some of the things you do as a student ambassador uh, here in New Bedford? Uh, the main thing is just talk to the student, let them know how it is here, uh, give them tours around campus, pointers, introduce them to staff, professors, and et cetera. Mm -hmm. yep. Give tours for students who are, yep. who, who are new students' perspective coming in. Yep. Let me ask you, do you also feel, because you're an ambassador and you're considered probably one of the student leaders here in New Bedford, do you feel that you uh, need to, to promote BCC more out and about? And do you do that? And how, how does that work? With I some do it, but not because I'm a student ambassador, but just because I like the school. Like, right. I told people about I, my friend's sister, she, she considers BCC, but she wants to go to UMass Dartmouth. And I wasn't even an ambassador yet, and I told her, you should come to BCC. It's like a great school, great professor. I loved it. So mm. she would definitely like it. I always give people pointers about BCC. Now, uh, to, to wrap up here, if, if someone in New Bedford, uh, is a student who may be looking at, at college, um, how, how, how valued do you see your BCC education um, as compared to maybe a, another school? Do you feel it's just as valuable as, as any other? Of school? course. I, actually, I might consider it more valuable because okay. as a high school graduate, I never thought of going to a big school like UMass Amherst, yeah. and BCC opened that door for me, to be honest. I, I never considered going to a four-year university. I never thought it was possible, and I came here to BCC, and they always welcomed me, making me feel comfortable, making me feel like somebody, and made a dean's list last semester, and now uh, sky's the limit for me. I Thanks appreciate it. That's, that's fantastic. Yep. Well, Joel, I, I appreciate your time. Thank yep. you for joining us, and good luck, especially right. going to UMass. Thank you. All right, go Minuteman, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, now as we move on with the, the program, it's time to look at one of the other successful alumni from Bristol Community College. And because we are New Bedford-based this month, it makes sense that our alumni this month is a New Bedford native. Hi, my name is Steve Martins, and I am a graduate of Bristol Community College, class of 2003. Well, I grew up in the north end of the city of New Bedford, uh, my parents uh, came here from Portugal at a young age and uh, education was, was very important to them because they never received the education uh, that they had. I'm a first generation everything, first generation uh, born here, first generation that graduated uh, high school. I went to Bristol Community College which was affordable and I could explore my options and I did that. And with that uh, I took classes in Fall River, I took classes in downtown New Bedford. And I'm so glad that I took classes in downtown New Bedford because I was so sheltered into the north end of the city of New Bedford that in my childhood, I missed the beauty of downtown. In my first semester at Bristol Community College, I ran for a student senate seat. And uh, at that time, I started realizing that maybe I like government. Uh, I haven't taken any classes yet at Bristol Community College in regards to, to government, but I wanted to run for student senate and then I won and that was probably one of the best experiences I had 
at Bristol Community College was being involved in Student Senate. So upon graduating from Bristol Community College in 2003, I went to the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth and I majored in political science. Learning uh, all my classes at, U at UMass Dartmouth, it became my senior year and at that time I, th I liked government, I liked helping uh, people in the city of New Bedford. I was so involved uh, in, in New Bedford at that time that I was seriously considering, considering a run my senior year uh, for public office in, in the city of New Bedford. People started uh, believing in me, which I'm, I'm very fortunate of, and then when the October preliminary uh, election came, uh, it was me and myself that, uh, myself, I, I apologize, and someone else that made it. I came in second place. And then we built this momentum that it took us to the November election and we won. In my district, no one has ever been president of the city council probably for almost 20 years. So in 2012, my colleagues overwhelmingly voted me as their council president. I was hired by New Direction South Coast uh, to work at the Greater New Bedford Career Center as an employment specialist. I was there until uh, 2011 and I was uh, promoted as their operations manager to head the Greater New Bedford Career Center for the state side. In 2014, I was sad to leave uh, the Executive Office of Labor and Workforce Development and pick up a role where I became the director of the Bristol County Retirement System where we have about um, over 4,000 active members and a little over 3,000 retirees. As a city councilor, I enjoy my role every single day. I'm so grateful for the opportunity that the residents of New Bedford have given to me. Every day I sit in this chair, I look at the front desk, and as we begin our meeting every single day, it just, it just gives me this opportunity that when I sit here, I'm helping so many people in New Bedford. I know that sometimes it's probably not the popular vote that I take, but I know that I can sleep at night and saying that it's the right vote that I took to help the city of New Bedford. BCC has a long documented commitment to energy efficiency and sustainability. Last month, the college played host to a conference on reversing global warming sponsored by the BCC Institute for Sustainability and Post-Carbon Education. Over 100 people interested in global warming attended a conference on reversing climate change held at the Fall River campus. Organizer Adam Sachs says topics at the conference offered attendees a ray of hope that people can take active control in making the planet sustainable. Our organizational goal is to reverse global warming and we do that by pulling carbon back into the ground and the conferences are a step in getting the word out since the climate conversation has been so overwhelmingly about greenhouse gas emissions, which are only one prong of the climate story. Nancy Lee Wood, director of the college's Institute for Sustainability and Post-Carbon Education, which sponsored the conference, says students today are growing up in a world where climate challenges will be the basis of the rest of their lives. And the idea is that we're trying to think about what we need to be doing to have a sustainable planet. So there are a wide variety of things that we can talk about, but this is one of the most important things that we need to be looking at. How do we get carbon out of the atmosphere into the soil? How do we re-green the earth? How do we get our water systems more manageable and more fluent for us? So those are the key issues for us. The ongoing goal of the Institute is to educate the college community and the region at large that a greater dedication is needed to re-green the earth. The 2014-2015 basketball season for the men's and ladies' bees are in the books and both qualified for postseason play. The women ended the season at 6 and 16 and lost in the opening round of the Massachusetts Community College Athletic Conference and Region 21 tournaments. The men had a spectacular regular season, finishing on top of their division at 18 and 6. They fell in the championship game of the MCCAC, and as of this taping, they're set to take part in the Region 21 postseason tournament. That's all for Around BCC this month. BCC celebrated African American History Month in February, and among the events was the History of Hip Hop celebration held at the Fall River campus. We leave you with those highlights. I'm Keith Tebow. Thanks for watching.